हेलो दोस्तों दिस इज परकतुल वेलकम टू हैक फॉर गुड सो यार आज हमारे साथ है शरद हाय शरद थैंक्स फॉर जॉइनिंग अस एंड वुड यू लाइक टू इंट्रोड्यूस योरसेल्फ प्लीज सर हाय माय नेम इज शरद एंड आई हैव बीन वर्किंग एज अ मायोस डेवलपर फॉर अबाउट 3 एंड 1/2 इयर्स नाउ आई करेंटली वर्क विद अ स्टार्टअप कॉल्ड फोल्ड मनी व्हिच इज एन एक्सपेंस मैनेजमेंट स्टार्टअप वी पुल इन ट्रांजैक्शन डेटा आर यूजिंग अ न्यू गवर्नमेंट एपीआई and uh, we show you we can auto categorize it and show it to you so that you can help uh, manage your expenses the app helps you manage your expenses um previously i used to work at a company called ultra human which is a fitness tech startup where we used to work on our glucose monitor and a hardware link which used to connect and stream real time health data so yeah i've been working with a couple of interesting startups and i've been fortunate to have a lot of time along the way building a lot of great stuff interesting So uh Sharad uh, can you please tell us like uh, what inspired you to become an iOS developer like how did you get started in this field when you got to know about iOS development and right? what was your journey please Yeah uh so I've been deeply passionate about computers and technology from the time I was really young uh when I was 8 years old I tried making a game with Microsoft PowerPoint where uh, I would use the mouse hover and mouse click effects and uh that is the first time i built a fully functioning game and the thrill i got from it was in the sky roll so that's when i knew i wanted to build something with computers for sure uh but so when i was in high school i started learning basic html and css and for building simple web sites for the school a lot for like some personal projects and uh, i was going to go ahead with the web development part but i think there are two incidents that really changed my outlook and got me into iOS development The first was towards the end of high school when my dad got his first iPhone. Uh, it was an iPhone six, and that was the first time I was experiencing an iPhone, and uh, the experience just blew me away. It was uh, the hardware and software working together, and it was just a phenomenal experience. I was like, "Wow, I I got to build something for this platform, and I wanted to build something that looks like it's part of the whole experience, right?" uh but then i didn't have a mac at that point of time and i, I figured that you need a mac to start into this so i didn't really go ahead with it uh and then the second incident would have been around the third year of my college where i was really fortunate to borrow a mac from one of my relatives for a couple of weeks so i used that opportunity and on the very first weekend i googled up some ios tutorials made a simple 2048 game It was it was very simple. There was no animations or anything. It was just a functioning game. I put up some screenshots and I uploaded the whole code on GitHub, and that helped me land my first iOS internship. And after that, there's been no looking back. Yeah, it's pretty interesting, like uh, inspiring journey. So, uh, let's say if I am a beginner and I want to start iOS development, so what programming language do I need to start with? for iOS development and what are the resources available for me right now uh, like in YouTube uh, or in Udemy what would you, uh, what resources would you suggest me to start my journey with yeah okay uh so i've been doing this for a while and uh, when i started i had to learn both objective c and swift uh, the first company that i got a full time job with they had an objective c code base because they had been building the app for a while uh Objective C is a good language. Like it's familiar for people who have done C, C plus plus in school. But the problem is it's very verbose, and uh, to get two two labels to appear on the screen, you have to write like a whole essay. So uh, it's it's not as fun. But luckily now Apple introduced Swift in two thousand fourteen, and it's picked up now. And most companies just use Swift. The Swift is a modern language, and uh, it's very easy to learn as well. So if you're starting iOS development today, Swift is the only language you will have to learn. Mostly, nobody will use Subject C anymore. And uh, so when I started that one weekend where I made the two zero four eight game, I used Apple's own the Swift programming language ebook, which is really simple and it's made with nice tutorials. Uh, that's a good place to start where you can learn the basics of the language. That helped me. That was enough for me to build that game. but uh that is like really basic but if you really want to go all the way there is a website called hackingwithswift.com which is created by a developer from UK called Paul Hudson and it is an amazing website it's fully free 
and it, it starts all the way from the basics of what is even for someone who is not from a computer science background it starts all the way from the basics of what is where and it goes all the way making complex projects where we can build your own apps and even publish it to the app store they have both text and video so it's whatever you prefer you can learn and yeah it's, it's completely free and it's a great place to start and even today i often go back and refer concepts from that website so i really recommend that you go have a good try at and it will be enough to cover the whole other journey yeah uh we will uh put up the link of that website in the description you can go and check it out so uh like uh you have covered the programming languages and the resources stuff so what are the basic tools and software that i need to start my and uh, ios development journey like can you please uh, walk us through the process of uh, building an ios app from the ideation to public uh, to publish it in the app store please in a brief like okay um yeah i think one like even when i started my journey one thing that most people when they starting out development are hesitant because we think uh, the barrier to entry is high because you need a mac and the uh, mac is very expensive at least in india where uh, the base macbook has started one lakh but luckily today uh, it's it's the cost to entry is really low because you can actually start you know uh, making an app and even publish it to the app store like right, from an ipad so and the cost of a second hand ipad is probably 10 to 15000 at max so you can start with it uh it, like i mean the only around 2021 or 22 that ipad uh, gained the feature where you can actually build the whole app and publish it to the app store so with the ipad there's a app called the swift playgrounds which is where you would do the majority of your workflow if you're using a mac uh, it's called xcode which is the one stop id for everything that you got to do for an ios app so it regardless of whether you're using an ipad or a mac the step is saying you open the app swift playground or xcode uh you can start a new project where when you start on project you can choose which platforms you want to build for so it's with i only like iphone or you want to build for the ipad the mac the apple watch or for all of it at once so you can choose that you can start with the project you can write your basic code you can test it directly on the app using simulators so you have simulators for all the apple devices so you can check it that or you can check it on a real device as well and uh, yeah it's quite has everything you can also uh make manage get workflows right from there and you can write your net test test them complete code coverage and everything I and mean, of course the publishing workflow is also on xcode where you will uh, send the app to the site and publish it on the app store and the post deployment workflow is also on xcode where you can actually uh, profile your app check for crash crashes and check for battery usage memory usage everything so xcode is the one stop shop where you start the journey and then you go all the way through you know when actually gathering customer data and debugging your app so yeah that's how you go about it yeah that's interesting so uh like uh i'm curious to ask what are the some common uh mistakes or challenges you had faced in your journey and you think like beginners will always face this and how did you overcome that uh right so one thing is uh, for people starting today uh especially there are two frameworks that are the provides to start with the development one is called ui kit and the other is called spect ui um so ui kit is the original og framework for making ios apps so it's very old and it's it you can code with swift but the foundation internally the framework uses objective c and it's an imperative framework so you actually need to take care of the layout so where you will place the button on the screen for example you need to actually define which like how far away it is it from the center of the screen and stuff like that so it's a lot of code it's, it's uh multiple lines to make single simple thing work but it's very powerful and it's very customizable but the swift ui is the modern framework it's hardly 40 years old now and it's completely built on swift and it's declarative so uh for people coming from web development it's just like react and very easy to learn as well 
and the, and obviously since it's the grid of all the layout logic is handled by the framework so you can just focus on the business logic so the challenge here is apple say that swift ui is the future of app development and that's the only thing you need to worry about but uh, it's not so simple in real life because you have both the same work existing right you now maybe the future for five years down the lane it's going to be very simple but right now both ui kit and swift ui exist and both are wonderful ways to start building your app so you really need to identify the right framework and uh, so it it really depends when you start your app depending on the complexity of how big your app is and what kind of animation the transitions you want to do based on all this is going to affect what framework you're going to choose and it's also about the paradigm of thinking one mistake i see a lot of people doing this even for season developers like us we are very experienced in ui kit so we're hesitant to use swift ui then there are places where swift ui is good so you ought to use it in way a lot of indie uh, new indie developer to come in or a lot of young developers to start now they start using swift ui but there are a few things you can't do with swift ui so instead of trying to use ui kit they come out try to hack it and make it work with swift ui so i think it's important to not be scared of either framework or that i mean whether one for in their own ways so we got to use them to their strengths and build the app based on the requirements and at the end of the day they're just tools so you got to uh, use that paradigm of thinking so if you're using ui kit you got to think about the layout and you're using swift ui you got to think about the business logic and think about how swift ui works and build apps according to that so i would say it's very important to use both them as tools and not attach yourself to one framework and just build the best app you can interesting that's indeed a very uh, very good point right uh what do you think uh, in india the average salary of an ios developer as a fresher right now i don't know right now i think it's about uh, 10 to 12 lakhs in akhtar uh, i would say 10 to 12 lakhs per year but of course uh, there are a couple of more startups where Firstly, I know I know a few people have started even with fifteen to sixteen lakhs per year. So I would say that's worth it. It's good. It's good as a fresh. <laughs> so, like, uh, like, is there something, uh, some ways to earn money while uh, learning iOS development? Like, I'm trying to say, like, uh, can someone do uh, freelancing stuff, like internships? So. Is there any way? Yeah, uh, the first freelancing and internships are definitely a way to go about it. Uh, there are a lot of internships for Irish developer with big companies, even with startups. The pay might not be great, but you learn a lot, uh, especially if you work with a team of senior developers. <clears throat> but then there's also the way of making your own app and publishing it to the App Store and earning money through that. Uh, so i started by making an indie app which i published to the app store and it was a free app so uh but you, so people generally think that free apps can't earn money so but then there's a very simple way but i just started a tip jar and uh, so there are people in the us uk a lot of people who used my app and since they found value in it they gave me like really generous tips and i was able to earn a lot of money through the indie app as well so It's, it's all about finding the right ways to monetize your app. So if you're starting out and making a really simple app, and if you feel like there's not enough value coming out of it yet, you can always add a tip jar, and I'm sure that people will find value and definitely give you a tip. But once, if you if you feel like you're making something giving a great value, or if you're you know adding server and you have a lot of server costs to cover, it's completely okay to go with an in-app subscription or the one-time purchase. I'm not into ads, so I don't really believe that you should have an ad experience on the app. So I rather suggest go for an ad-free basic experience, and then if you really want to monetize it, and add a you know layer of a paywall so that you can unlock it and customers can use the full features. Interesting. So uh, finally, uh, what advice would you give to beginners who are just thinking to start starting out with iOS development? Okay. uh so yeah actually one thing uh, that we need to talk about is if, especially if you're in college there's something called uh, the worldwide developers conference that happens every year uh, apple conducts this every year in june which is where they introduce the next version of ios 
So there is something called the WWC scholarship or the SWIFT student challenge that's called these days. This is only for college students and it's a fantastic opportunity. Basically, you would just need to make a small demo app and you need to send it to Apple. And if they really like it, they, there are 350 winners uh, declared each year from the whole world. Mm -hmm. The students are declared as winners. And these people get a lot of cool swag. You even get a free AirPods Pro from Apple. And uh, you get a lot of recognition. So a lot of my, I, I was not able to do it because I started out of the late. But a lot of my friends that won the scholarship and uh, a lot of junior have been mentoring have also won the scholarship. And uh, their life really changes after this because you are exposed to more opportunities both in India and outside India because it's since it's a global scholarship, you get recognition and you're able to, able to easily get in touch with other people. So I would say that's something you definitely go out to explore. And before the pandemic, it was even great where uh, all these 350 students were actually flown in to Cupertino and you could attend the conference in the US. Uh, these days, it's more of a, they still do this, but not all the 350 out of that, a small subset of people are taken to the US. So you still have that opportunity to go to the US. And a side perk is you get a visa for 10 years, so you can always use it for other things as well. So apart from that, a gender advice would be use as many apps as you can. The App Store has like a million plus apps. And uh, I think the only way to get inspired and build great apps is to find out what's there. There are so many different apps, so many creative, beautiful apps that you've got to use and understand. Uh, that's what inspires you to build great apps. And that's what helps you identify problems that are in the market and solve it. So use apps. Um, love you know you gotta love the platform and and i think don't be afraid to build that it's like a lot of people think hey you know building a simple app probably there that, that, that aren't people who want to use it but i always give the example of an app called things three uh it's it's been running for 15 years now it's a very small company i know for 15 years and they're making millions of dollars it's just a to-do list app and it, it's eight thousand bucks the cost of the app eight thousand bucks so you would think that who, who would buy a to-do list app? Like a lot of us engineers, we start by building a to-do list app as a demo app. But then there is some there are people who found value with that app. There's something unique that that, that app is doing. That's why people find it. So it doesn't matter how simple the problem is. Uh, there's always your version of the solution that's going to appeal to someone in the world and they're going to buy it. So yeah, just go out there, make something beautiful, put it out in the world and just never stop building. Interesting. That's indeed a great, uh, very good point. Like, yeah. So thanks, Shadat. Uh, thanks for taking your time and joining us. Like, it uh, it's been nice talking to you. And uh, thanks again. Thank you. Bye. -bye.